Hello everyone and welcome into the Pixel Show. I'm Robert Evans and today we are going to talk about the Sony a7R5. I took it out to shoot some dog sled racing on a frozen lake, so come check out the results. <laughs> So the Sony a7R5 is a new camera from Sony and it's been out two, three months now or so. And normally the application for it probably would be commercial, landscape portrait, something along those lines. But I took it out and I shot some dog sled racing with it. Now I shot exclusively the Sony 70 to 200 2.8 GM. I wanted to try to keep it simple. I was on a snowmobile. I didn't want to have a ton of gear. I've shot this race once or twice before in the past. So I figured the 70 to 200 was a real good option and I'll show you a couple tricks how you get a little bit more out of that lens as we go through the program. Alrighty, so let's talk about some of the features that stood out to me and a couple of the things that I really like in this new camera. It has AI in it, which is very awesome. It has the A7R is equipped with an AI processing unit specifically dedicated to interpreting significant amounts of data to enable more accurate and recognition of subjects and a wider range of subject as well. One of the cool features that I mentioned before that stood out to me now are the wide range of things that the camera recognizes. So in the past, of course, it was human and animals and birds as far as eye detection goes, but now it even goes beyond that. And it recognizes cars, trains, airplanes, insects as well. So I think that's really cool. This was an airplane that flew overhead. Another feature that I really noticed when I was editing these images is the white balance. How easy it was and how little I had to do in post. I'm a Capture One editor, so I use Capture One in post to edit these RAW files. And I really noticed the accuracy of the white balance. And one thing, looking at this picture a little bit bigger that hopefully you can see, is the also the dynamic range in the color so there was not, it's not just white as you can see some of the gray and the snow near the dog's feet it really helped separate out that a lot so there is improved accuracy with the white balance control and the function along with the ai capabilities in the camera it has a visible light plus ir sensor on the front of the camera and it helps the AI processing unit to achieve more accurate white balance in difficult lighting situations. Another feature that was important to me, now I mentioned I would probably shoot any of my sports, I use the A1 to do that, but I wanted to shoot the A7R5, and this is technically a sport type event, but it shoots 10 frames a second, which is admirable for uh, a very high 60 megapixel resolution camera. It will also shoot continuously 583 compressed RAW files at 10 frames a second. So I never really shot bursts that many when I was doing it, but that was pretty impressive as well. And as you can see from this image, it really captures the action. I, I don't know how many images I shot all day, and of course I edited and I pick only the best of the best but I really got some great images out of it. Here are some of the features I used that day so you have an idea of some of my settings. I used auto white balance because I shoot raw and it's easy to go in and, and just adjust that. On autofocus, I put it on continuous high plus. That way I got 10 frames a second out of it. And then my focusing mode, I use focus tracking with a medium spot. So this is on the R, this is also on the A1, so this is how I shoot the A1 as well. And of course I mentioned I shoot a compressed RAW file. 
and just some general settings that I used during the day. The camera never left 100 ISO because it was bright out, even though the sun wasn't out. The shutter speeds, I only varied between about 500 of a second and 2,000th of a second. And my aperture was between f2 and f4.0, pretty much for all the images that I shot. And just as a side note, with the newer cameras, they run two cards. So I run the new Type A cards. I have two 160 gig Type A cards. And I run two cards in the slot, and they're basically redundant. So they both capture the same thing. This is just a habit that I've gotten into from shooting weddings and portraits. If one card goes down, then the other card. There's a lot of different ways you can set this up. You could have one card record RAW files, one card record JPEGs. You could have one card record stills, and one card record video. Or you could have one card record, fill up, and then move to the second card, whatever your preference is. But this is a really nice touch and this is in a lot of the new Sony cameras. All right, so one of the custom functions that I did, one of the things I like to do on my cameras, and this is set on my A1 as well as this, is I set it the, I set the APS-C mode to the side button on the Sony lenses that has that. So let me show you this a little bit bigger. So in a normal file that comes out of this camera is 61 megapixels. I think that would be uncompressed raw. I'm shooting a compressed raw, so it's a little bit smaller, but 9,504 9, by 5344. When you use APS-C mode, what it basically does is it uses the center portion of the sensor and it crops in a little bit. So it's roughly a 26 megapixel file, 6240 by 4160. And I do this especially when I'm shooting sports and things like that because I want to be able to get a little bit more out of my telephoto lenses when I'm shooting sports. The nice things with these bigger megapixel cameras, this one's 61, the A1 is 50, and you have a lot more sensor and you have a lot bigger file to work with, so you can crop. So it's really nice for sports. Now, I used to not be a fan of bigger files because I didn't want to uh, use up hard drive space and things like that, but I've really come to like it, especially shooting sports, so that I have the ability to crop in. So this is one way, setting the APS-C button on the side of your lens to crop in while you're shooting, and of course you can do it afterwards. But let me show you how to set that up in the camera. Okay, so I have the camera here. It's attached so that I can show you the menu. Right now you're seeing around the room. But if we go into the menu, and we go into the menu and you go down to the yellow box. You go down to one, two, three, four to custom dial sets. You go to the first one, then you go down and you can watch the icons and there it is on the camera. And then you push the center button and you see I already have mine set up, but you can scroll through a bunch of different things and then once you get to APS-C, you just push it, and now it's set. And so let me just show you, there's a dartboard across the room. So when you push it, look at it punches in. If I push it, I let it off, I push it, I let it off, I push it. So you get a lot more out of your lens that way. So this is exactly what I shot that day. This is the R5 with the 70 to 200, and this is at 200. So you now there's 70, there's 200, and oh, I need more and then I punch it in. So basically it's a 1.5 crop. So if you do the math 200 times 1.5, I didn't do that ahead of time, I'll put it on the screen. You get to, you get just a little bit more out of your lens and it's roughly going to be 200 times 1.5. So we'll put it on the screen. Your 200 millimeter lens now jumps up to even more. So you, I like to, when I'm shooting the camera, I like to see the crop, so if I use the APS-C and it punches in, and now I'm roughly getting a 26 megapixel file. If I crop it, of course that's gonna be smaller, but even at 26 megapixels, and then I crop it, I might have something that's 19 or even down to seven. I'm gonna show you some examples of that. So let's move on. Other standouts with this camera that I really noticed, like I said, it's 35 millimeter, it's a 61 megapixel cam camera. 
But the new AI processing unit, it recognizes people, body parts, things like that. So the focusing is much better. It has eight times the processing power. So it's really beautiful. And the other thing that I really noticed is the color. I really love the color in this camera. It just seems to be more brilliant and more beautiful. All right, so let me show you an example of cropping and what you can do and why shooting a high resolution camera is really quite awesome. All right, so here's the original. Let me show it to you without my face in it. So here's the original, and I was shooting a compressed file. So this was the original file, and I have it cropped for the show, but this is the full frame file, 39 megapixel file. And then this was where one of the mushers was trying to press another one. Now, if I were to crop it, just my normal crop, how I'd like to see it presented to the client would probably be something like this. So I cropped it and this one is 27.4 megapixels. Now, what if I only wanted to see just the one musher? So now I've cropped it. So it's just the musher, this lead musher. And this is an 11.5 megabyte file, still a good size file. And if I wanted to show both mushers, this one is a 7.5 megabyte file. So it's still beautiful and crystal clear and I can crop in. And even a 7.5 megapixel file, you could blow this up pretty and big. And of course with today's software, that you can make files bigger if you really needed to, you really needed to blow this up more, you could do that. All right, let me show you some of my favorites of the day. All right, so here's one. Let me make them bigger again for you. This was a, one of the dogs. These dogs really love to do this. This race was only about 44 miles. It's a very short race for a dog race. And these dogs are just, loving to get out there and run in the snow. As I mentioned, this was on a frozen lake where we shot this. I really love the depth of field in this. You get the great expression of the dog running. I love his little red shoes to protect his feet. I don't know much about that. And I assume some of the dogs, certain dogs have certain needs. So they put these on their feet and not all the dogs have them. Here's another one that has, and I love this image because the dog a nice green face and the snow on his face. I really loved that about him. So it really made a nice, a nice pleasant. This was probably midway through the race. All right, here's another image. This image I really liked. This was out on the lake, probably around mile 20 or so. And I just liked the brown. Let me show it too big. I just like the brown matching the colors of the dog and then the bright red with his bib and the sleds redness of the bib. Here's another one. There's this nice, there's this long bridge that goes over the lake. And since the dogs are long and drawn out, I thought it would be a nice juxtaposition of shooting the dogs passing in front of this bridge with the bridge in the background. Here's another one similar to that. I really love this image. Again, I wanted to show the whole musher and the whole team. And I love the guys in the background, the three pickup trucks. Those guys are out there ice fishing. And to me, it looks, I don't know, like it could be a Budweiser ad or any type of outdoor ad, but I love the guys out in the back with their three trucks ice fishing. This was the leader of the race. His name's Dave, I forget what his last name is. This is the third year that I've shot this race, and this is the third year that Dave's won the race. So knowing that, I, made, I wanted to make sure I got several pictures of him during the race and shooting him, because most likely he's the winner and the people that I shoot for, mm -hmm. of course, they want pictures of the winners of the race out on the track. Of course, while I was out there, I had to shoot some portraits. So this guy was a race judge. He was really great. I shot several portraits before, after, and during the race. Let me show it to you full. But I just love this guy, his long ash on his cigarette, his nose running. And you can't help that when you're out there. It was cold. It was probably 15 to 20 degrees, somewhere in that range. It got warmer, of course, as the day went on. This was earlier in the day. But this guy was just a beauty. This is Dave in the pits. Again, I shot him early in the day because I was going to anticipate that he won again, and I was right. And there was some beautiful backlight, and it was really cold in the morning, probably like eight, nine degrees. So I wanted to make sure that I was capturing some candidates of him. 
Now this girl, she is one of the youngest mushers. Her father races a team and she races a team and she was getting ready. I shot some really beautiful images of her last year, so I wanted to make sure that I got some more of her this year. And again, look, if I wanted to crop this image, it's a nice big file. Now you get a little bit more, see your eyes, see the dogs. One of the great benefits about shooting a high megapixel camera. Here's another female racer, just prepping her dogs and giving them some love in the morning before they take off. And again, I really liked it was cold and getting the breath of the dog dogs and her and just her loving on her dogs right before they go out onto the snow and race. These two guys were out on the lake. There was so many people out on the lake as well. Kite surfers and snowmobilers and, and these guys were cross country skiing and they stopped to take a break and I just this moment right here. And here's a fun one, this dad pulling their kids around and really like having a good time at the end of the day. Those are some of the images from the dog sled race. My overall impressions, again, this wasn't meant to be a review. I just wanted to show you images that I got with the camera, how I used it, some of the features that benefited me uh, from using the A7R5 in an application like this, shooting dog sled racing. Again, not necessarily a sports camera, but at 10 frames a second, you could definitely shoot sports with it, especially if you want to crop in and then maybe you're not shooting a sport that's really fast where you don't need to capture 20 frames a second like you can with the A1. Thank you um, for watching. My name is Robert Evans. I'm a Sony artisan of imagery and I make content when I'm not working and I try to show you how to get the most out of Sony cameras. Have a great day.